Okay, so we've been talking about commands, and we've been talking about usted commands uh, and ustedes commands, which are more formal, not the same as two commands, okay? So we have a few steps to learn usted commands. Step one is change it to the yo form first, okay? And that way, if it's an irregular verb, if it's a stem-changing verb, you don't mess it up. So if you've done that, then if it's an AR verb, your new ending is going to be E or EN. If it's an ER or IR verb, your new ending is going to be A or AN. Very simple. We've mastered that, okay? So we've done a lot of pass the salt, add garlic, fry the onion. So today what we're going to do is take it a step farther, and we're going to learn how to put our pronouns in there. So instead of saying fry the carrots, today we're going to learn how to say fry them. And instead of saying don't fry the carrots, we're going to learn how to say don't fry them. Okay, so we're going to learn how to put those pronouns in there. Y'all have been working with pronouns since Spanish 1, so you will find that it comes back to you very, very quickly as we do this. All right, so on page 264, Nathan, if you're with us, we're on 264, and that's where we're going to learn where to place the pronouns. It's very, very simple. You're going to put them in one place for affirmative, another place for negative, okay? So, so for an affirmative pronoun, we are going to place the direct object pronoun or indirect object pronoun at the end of the verb. So here's an example on 264 for affirmative. Llévenos al supermercado. Take us to the supermarket. So let's pretend we're just going to make the command first. We're using the verb llevar. Llevar, to take or to carry. We use this with the where also, but if we're taking something like taking our recipe or taking our grocery list or even taking a person, we use llevar. So if we want to make this an usted command, step one is to change it to the yo form. Yo form of yevar, it's a simple AR verb, is yevo. Okay, very simple. Second step is we want to get rid of that O. And since it's an AR verb, our new endings are going to be what? Yeve for usted or yeven for ustedes. Okay, very, very simple process when we have a regular AR verb. So, but if you want to say, you take us, we know that the pronoun for us is nos. And if it's affirmative, we're going to drop it onto the end, and we'll have yay, they won't. Take us. If it was, oh, y'all take us, mom and dad are going, and you want to say take us, it's going to be yay, they knows. Because it is affirmative, a positive command. For a negative command, let's drop down to a negative command. In negative commands, you place the object pronoun before the verb, but after the no. Okay? So if I want to say, don't take us, we're just going to stick to the same verb we have right now. Don't take us. We've already conjugated the verb into yo. We've already figured out the you and the you all command. So if you want to say, don't take us, it would be no, no, yay, they. You don't take us. Or if it's to both parents, it would be no, no, yay then. So that's simple. Attach it to the end if it's positive. Attach it before the verb or have it separate before the verb if it's negative. So the example they've given here is no le vendas esta camisa. Don't sell her the shirts, okay? Or no lo pueden. Don't you all taste it. So it's really simple. You know those pronouns. Quite often, the good news in the exercise is that the pronouns are already going to be there for you. You're going to use them uh, to describe the noun, and then it's, it's just going to be the same thing. So let's look at activity 13 over here on 265, and we'll get a little practice. It's going to take lots of words here to spit these sentences out. So what it says is to give the usted, remember James, always look at the instructions to see if you're using usted or ustedes because most of the time it's going to tell you so you don't have to just guess see how it's in the dark bowl this time we're using usted so the model has some eggs there and model a says take algo con los huevos los fríos what should i do with those eggs should i fry them and the answer is c fría los fry them or you could say no no los fría but the point is, you're going to take the verb free ear, and your step one, because free ear is a stem change verb, 
Don't mix up with that E. Step one is so super important. Always, always changing it to the yo first. So yo, frio. Okay, we're changing that E to I, right? So yo, frio. So then we got to get rid of that O. So for a new step command, we're going to have fria, which is an E and I R verb. Our endings are going to be A and A N. Or for a new status, it's going to be fria. So those are our two endings. And then if it's using usted, we know we have to deal with this one. And since we have los huevos, guess what? The pronoun's already there for you. You don't have to guess what that pronoun would be. You're just going to attach it onto the end. Free all of right there. Okay, so it's quite a process in order just to find it. But once you do it a couple of times, you'll find that it's really quick. All right, number one, we're gonna do the exact same wording with each of these. So what do I do with the carrots? Should I, air beer, what is air beer? Should I boil them, okay? So our sentence would be, que hago con, what are the words for carrots? What's the pronoun? Zanahorias. Las zanahorias, okay? So what should I do with the carrots? Should I boil them? So first of all, we need to get them in this step. I boil them. So air beer. Uh, again, another stem changer. E to I E. They love throwing these hard ones in there for us. E ervo. Should I boil them? Them las. Las ervo. Should I boil them? E e ervo las. E ervo las because it's an I R verb. Our ending is an A, and we're attaching the las zana orias onto the end. So that's all there is to it. See e ervo las. Yes. Boil them, okay? These are easy because they are positive. Number two, probar. What does probar mean? Mm -hmm. To taste. Oh my goodness, it's another stem change mm -hmm. word. So first, should I taste them? Should I taste them? We want to do this step first. Should I taste them? Fuebo. Mm -hmm. And what is them? Then what? Las, las, fresa. So, las huevos, should I taste them? Fueba. Las, las for fresa, that's your pronoun. And fueba ends in an A because, for, oh, for bar, fueba. It's an AR verb, so we're going to change it to an E. Fueba, las. Right. Number three, batir, and what are those we're going to do? Huevos. Los huevos. I always try to say the with it because that's going to help you remember los huevos. Los is your pronoun. It already gives it to you if you just do that. All right, so should I beat them? Let's put it in that step. Should I beat them? Uh, um, Bato. 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 Batalo. 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 Oh, I'm skipping an important thing that we need to know. And that is Batalo. Huebalas. And Ierbalas. The accent. Look back at 264. Something I skipped there. Note that when a pronoun is attached to an affirmative command of two syllables or more, the stressed vowel carries an accent. So I'm not going to freak out over those, but I do want you to learn it. Look at the affirmative up there in red, how they have Yevenos and Ponganlas. So we do need to, if it has two syllables or more, bata, lo, fruebe, three syllables, ierva, three syllables, that stressed vowel needs to get an accent, okay? Not worth counting off over, but do something you need to learn. All right, number four, suddenly we're going to turn these into negatives, into negatives. This means that the placement of the pronoun is different than it was in number one, two, and three. Number four, no fray ear. What is it that we're trying to fray ear here? No uh -oh. Onions. Onions. Oh, not garlic. Uh, no. Those aren't uh, garlic. Hey, boy, yeah. So, how do I say, should I uh, fry it? Or should I should fry it? Um, um, we frio. Las frio. Las frio. Las frio. Should I fry them? Remember, fray ear is the one that changes to an I. Las frio. No. Free. What is that? Free. 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 Okay, where does the pronoun go this time? Wait, it's not the. 
Oh, that's right. With no, no yeah. la fria. Yeah. La fria, okay? Don't fry them. When it's a negative, the pronoun's going to go in front. It's going to go in front. All right? Number five. Number five. No onion uh, deer. What's onion deer mean? Uh, don't add salt. Don't add salt. Okay, what is the Spanish word for salt? So, salt. El sal. El sal. Okay. La sal. La sal. I'm sorry. La sal. I got that mixed up. So it's feminine. Um, so, first of all, should I add it? Um, no. La onion. Okay. Yeah. La So, first, put it in the go form. Go. Should I add it? No. Um, no. No. La onion. Da. Correct. Anya da. Because it means I or her. So it's going to be getting an A ending. Don't add it. And number six. Okay. No servir. What is it we're not going to serve? Lechuga. La lechuga. La lechuga. Notice servir once again. Same change verb that you use when yeah, you change to an I. Would be la sirva. La sirva. Do I serve it? No. No la sirva. No la sirva. No la sirva. Don't you serve it. Sirvo here because I. Should I serve it? No. Don't you serve it. Okay? So quite easy process. It's just a matter of following your steps. Okay? The no makes the pronoun go in front. If it's a yes, the pronoun attaches to the end and you get an answer. All right. Let's look a little bit at activity 14 here. Activity 14 takes us back to our chores. From Spanish 1. So this is going to test your memory. Mm -hmm. See if you remember those chores. Also notice in the instructions that it is ustedes commands this time. Ustedes commands. I mean, we're going to go with the plural over here this time. The E-N, the A-N commands. So it's either going to be A-N or E-N. E-N for A-R verbs. A-N for E-R and I-R verbs. Okay. So let's do just a couple of these and see how we do. What's the model? The model says, limpiar los baños, to clean the bathroom. Person A says, tenemos que limpiar los baños. Do we all have to clean the bathroom? Mm -hmm. And the parents say, si, limpian los, y'all clean them. Or no, no los limpian, y'all don't clean them. So let's look at number one. Number one, tenemos que barrer el suelo. Do we have to sweep the bathroom as well? Sweep the floor. Sweep the floor. Sweep the floor. Do we have to sweep the floor? So let's say the parents say, yes, you all sweep the floor. Sweep. Okay, by rare is a regular ER verb. Oh, it's 
Oh, they are, bro. That's him, though. Sip, 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 all right, number four, lava of los platos. What chore is that? Wash the dishes. Okay, so do we have to wash the dishes? No. Uh, C, lavenlos. 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 No, 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 and or on your test, you may want to make yourself a little chart that says usted and ustedes, and then it has the ending for each verb, so you can just kind of double check if you know, okay, my verb is barrer. My verb is barrer. That's an ER verb. I think that's regular. I don't come over here. My regular ER is this, and then think about whether or not it's a stem factor. And then all of those have the uh, ustedes ending because it was we have to. Right? right. All of those, we have to. All right, look at page 266. 266. All right, let's look at the um, Pueban Las Tapas culture notes here. Uh, what is Pueban? Um, what is Probar? To taste, to, taste, the, to taste the tapas. Taste the tapas. We're going to find out what tapas are today in this orange box, okay? ¿Cuál es la relación entre las tradiciones y la comida? What is the relationship between traditions and food? Una tradición en España es comer tapas, que son porciones pequeñas de comida. Okay? So a Spanish tradition is to eat tapas. We'll actually quite often go to a tapas bar or a tapas restaurant. Sometimes you may even be in Florida or in some big city and see a restaurant that says tapas. It is an appetizer place. That's the idea. Tapas are appetizers, small portions, pequeñas porciones, little portions of food. A muchos españoles les gusta ir a un restaurante con los amigos para conversar y comer tapas antes de cenar. Many people in Spain like to go out before dinner and get an appetizer, okay, with their friends. Remember, dinner is quite a late affair in Spain, in Europe in general, and in a lot of South American countries, they eat dinner quite late at night, 8, 9, 10 o'clock. So they go for tapas is like an early, just enough food to get you by, okay? So they'll go have conversation and have tapas. Here are some common ones. Las aceitunas, olives. El jamón. Los calamares. You know what calamari is. You've heard that word. Y pulpos, which is octopus. We kind of use those words interchangeably in America. If you're at Olive Garden and you ask for calamari, it may be octopus or maybe squid, but that's the idea. Son tapas típica, typical, typical dishes that you would order. Otra tapa es la ensaladilla rusa, Russian salad. Una mezcla de patatas, zanahorias, guisantes, y mayonesa. What's in rusa? What's in that salad? Um, um, potatoes, carrots, peas, mayonnaise. Right? Yeah. So kind of like a broccoli salad for us. We have we have broccoli salads. Maybe if you've gone to somebody's house and they've mixed up mayonnaise with the broccoli and a little bit of red onion and sometimes a little bit of cauliflower or some raisins. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've been to a funeral, quite often that's a funeral food, you know, a broccoli salad. Mm -hmm. This is Russian yeah. salad. It's very similar, okay? Una tapa muy popular es la tortilla de patatas, okay? A potato uh, omelet, basically. If you look up, it's kind of like a quiche for us. We, we fix quiches in the South. They fix these tortillas. Okay? Este tipo de tortilla es muy diferente a las tortillas que encontramos en México y Centroamérica, que son delgadas y de maíz y harina. So made out of either corn or flour, um, and they're very thin. Okay, it doesn't look thin to me, it looks like a thick pizza, but compared to what they make in Mexico. Okay, so these are tapas. Tapas are appetizer type dishes, snack type dishes that you would go out with friends to get possibly before dinner or in place of dinner. Okay, so not hard. This is pretty much the end of the chapter. So we've done these two things. We've done uh, making commands and we've done putting pronouns with commands. So turn to 270 real quick. I do want to introduce you to this one other culture aspect, 270. This is Pablo Neruda. Pablo Neruda is an author. He is from Chile. 
Let's look at what it says about him. Those horas de Pablo Neruda, two um, odes from Pablo Neruda. Pablo Neruda, look at his dates there. He uh, died the year I was born. Fue una famoso poeta chileno. He was from Chile. He even won a Nobel Prize in literature. Neruda escribió muchas horas, many odes, and sus horas describe las cosas más básicas de vida, the most basic things of life. For example, escribió una hora a la mesa y otra a la silla. So he wrote a poem to a chair and a poem to a table. Objetos que usamos todos los días, objects you use every day. También escribió horas a muchos alimentos esenciales como cebolla, limón, sal, aceite. So he wrote about ingredients. Lee los siguientes versos de Neruda. I'm not going to go all the way through these poems. I want to look over at the questions on 271 and kind of go back and look because they're not, they're not, there are a lot of words as opposed to a fluid poem. So look at the questions. Number one, ¿Quién es Pablo Neruda? We just said he's a poet from Chile. Mm -hmm. Okay, I say Neruda and sus horas. What does he do? He wrote basic things. Okay, number two, ¿Sobre qué cosas escribió Neruda? Algunas horas. So what are some things he wrote about? Salt, sure. olive oil, chair, and a window. Good, okay. Number three, según Neruda, according to Neruda, hey, I say la sal. Okay, we're going to find that. What does the salt do? What's the salt do? Um, well, it's the desert. Oh, okay. It's in the first poem on the first page. Canta la sal. What is cantar? To sing. The salt sings. The salt sings. Okay, it's an ingredient. It sings. Okay. Donde puedes escuchar la sal? Where can you listen to the salt? In the desert. Uh-huh, desierto. Good. De que tipo de aceite escribe Neruda? What is aceite? Oil. Oil. So what tipo? Type, 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 of type of oil. I mean, I'm guessing olive. Olive oil. He's talking yeah. about olive oil. If you look at the pictures of the trees there, those are olive trees okay, that grow probably somewhere where he was. Okay, so olive oil is something he writes about. So basically, I just wanted you to have an idea who he is in case it comes up in our culture section. He is an author from Chile, writes about very basic things of life, especially things in the kitchen, ingredients, chairs, tables, olive oil. Okay? So just something to know. He obviously was quite well respected to win the Nobel Prize. Um, so just a name that you should be familiar with in Spanish literature. All right, tomorrow we're going to do grammar quiz and then we'll move on into our repasso um, so that hopefully we can do a review since you will be gone on Friday with basketball and Nathan will be out as well and we're going to test when we get back on Tuesday. So I want to make sure we get a review in on Thursday. All right. Um, you will probably use the study hall. Okay. Well, call your mom and ask, can you bring it in? I mean, this works perfectly in this class. And how crazy is that?